welcome to Beth Roars. I'm Beth and today I'm going to be doing a vocal coach reacts to Pentatonix singing Bohemian Rhapsody. Dar. Before we start, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. My handle is at Beth Roars. Also, do check out my website, bethroars.com, where you can find in-depth singing technique blogs and you can also book a singing lesson from me. And last but not least, do check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash bethroars, where you can find more exclusive content and you can guarantee that your request definitely happens. I love pentatonics. I love a cappella groups. I love Queen. This is gonna be good. Already love it. Love how they do the original Queen thing of doing the slide on the word slide right on a matapic. Matapoic? On a mat. Whatever. I also like how they're just sitting on the sofa. It reminds you of where they started in their earlier videos when it literally was just them sitting on a sofa with no effects. Although they do have a lot of production there. And I'm sure the sofa's about to get crazy. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. like on the original Queen record, which was quite a big deal at the time. Of course, I love the bassy low notes, I love the wind sound, and I liked where they're going with the, the dumb sounds. I'll talk more about that later, I'm sure. Mama just killed a man Put a gun against his head what I love about those dum dum dums is that they all have their own pattern that joins together to make that piano riff that we're so used to. So it feels like each note is coming from a different place. I also really enjoy Mitch Grassy on this. It really suits him, it sits in his range well, but also his voice is similar to an early Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury changes his style as he gets later on into his career. So if you hear a really late Queen record, he's going to have a much more full sound. But earlier on in his career, Freddie Mercury uses a more mixed tone, a lighter tone. There's a brilliant YouTube video by Mark Mattel on YouTube, so check it out. It tells you all about Freddie Mercury's technique. But Mitch automatically sits in a kind of early Freddie sort of place, so it works really well on his voice. If I'm not back again this time tomorrow Carry on, carry on As if nothing really matters Epic so far
so what they've done really well here is they've used the harmonies to make the big moment. So it's not just Mitch by himself and them as backing singers or making the accompaniment. They all join together to make a huge big moment in full harmony. It was great. And I enjoyed the bass line on the Any Way The Wind Blows. That was a nice different texture to everything we'd heard before. And of course the arrangement is great from them, but that comes from the amazing original writing as well. They have so much to draw from and they're doing it brilliantly. That was great, that's so inventive. So, of course, there is a guy who can make his voice sound just like an electric guitar, but it's so rare. Like, I think there's one guy that I know of that can do it, YouTube it, it's amazing. What an inventive way to get that distorted sound. And it keeps with that kind of like DIY sort of feel that Pentatonix used because of their earlier videos, they did do it completely by themselves. And although they have a lot more production value now, you still want a little bit of that feeling. That's why it's nice that they still got the sofa, even though the sofa is literally going down the road. I see a little silhouette of a man. shared out the parts really well so everyone has a moment to shine, everyone has their something to sing. Apart from poor Kevin the beatboxer, they need him on the drums. But as I said before, their arrangement is great but they have so much to draw from. They're using a lot of the original harmonies to make that sound. But the combination of Pentatonix and Queen for me is just a winning formula. <laughs> driving repeated bass underneath with Kevin and Avi doing the doom 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 and the long lines from Mitch and Kirsten and then obviously Scott on the lead and that just kept that energy going and kept it up and then when they relaxed and all had those individual lines together that was clever that was lovely and the way that they've set it in terms of visuals is really interesting to me I think it's great <laughs>
the things I liked at the beginning. So it's nice how it visually ended how it started. It had that lovely wind sound, it had the lovely harmonies and it had that low bass. I can see the comments and all people will be saying, they'll be like, no, but it's not Queen. You can't beat Queen. And I don't think they're trying to beat Queen here. I think they're honouring Queen and I think this is a really brilliant version. And what's amazing about it is that they are making the whole accompaniment with just voice. There's no instruments, there's no drums, everything is made in the voice. I think their arrangement is incredible and how they split the parts between them. They are fantastic arrangers. What I love about Pentatonix as a group is that all five of them as individuals are kind of odd. They all have this superpower that isn't particularly commercial as an individual. But then stick them together, they've just got an ideal formula. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.